Hi everyone. Well, it's been six weeks roughly since I uh, bought the P1S there, Bamboo Labs 3D printer. And I just thought I could do a quick review of how I've gone with it. I've been overall very satisfied with it. It's not a perfect experience, but overall pretty good. I mean, it's a vast, vast improvement on my old ANET A8, but still fundamentally the same thing. I mean, you've got to slice a model to print it and then you get bed adhesion issues, which I sort of have overcome, but I'll, I'll go into that. I've tackled several larger projects, uh, but mostly small ones, and I'll show you some examples of the smaller ones. Probably the biggest project I did was at the very beginning, and that was the uh, poop tray system. The why I built the one where um, you have a part attached to the back of the P1S, and then it has a variety of different size bins. I went for the medium size bin, so you can remove the bin, chuck it in the bin, because these printers do do waste filament. They they purge the filament every time you start the printer. And particularly if you change colour half the way through a print, it'll also purge then. So you end up with lots of little bits of what they call poop. It's basically just, just this stuff. But that's okay, I guess it, it looks like more than it really is, but um, nonetheless it is waste. Overall my printing experience has been pretty good. I've had a few problems with adhesion, so it'll break loose from the base and then you end up with a big bird's nest which has got to go in the bin uh, and then restart. Um, it pays to clean the, 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 the build plate, they're like a flexible sheet which comes off the bed. Um, with laundry soap I've used barbecue cleaner which is pretty aggressive and that, that seems to work quite well for me. But also I found that the, the supplied paint, which I think is called a PE1, I'll correct that if that's wrong, um, over time builds up, I think it must be oils from your fingers, and that stops you from getting an adhesion to, to the plate. So they need to be cleaned. I've changed over now to a, um, a plate that I got from AliExpress. They have a range of plates and they're so much cheaper. Um, and it's a smooth plate and a textured plate on the other side. Uh, so you can swap over, but the texture, the smooth plate of the adhesion is far better. For example, I was having a lot of trouble with ASA, which was just wouldn't stick. It stuck, stuck to begin with, stuck, stuck to begin with, but um, after time it, it would just come loose. Same with uh, ABS, that was that had a similar similar problem. First thing I printed, no problem, but after that wouldn't stick at all. But with a smooth plate, it actually sticks really well and will break off only really when you've cooled the plate down, which is meant to do anyway, by the way, meant to take the plate out to let it cool, then remove your item. Otherwise you, you have a, um, a chance of ruining the finish on your plate. So these are some examples of some things I've been printing. Um, I did a video on doing this. This is an irrigation part. It's, um, from memory, it's 19 millimetres, is that right? 19 millimetres down to 13 millimetres uh, for the black pipe irrigation. Um, these are, I printed these in ASA and they've been quite good. I've got one in service, this is a spare. The one that's there now has been there five weeks and hasn't leaked and or burst so far anyway, but I'll monitor that and see how it goes. Um, oh yes, vacuum parts. Again, I did a video on making these. This is to go into a Dyson handheld vacuum cleaner and adapt it to a, a Hoover a nozzle, long nozzle. Uh, pretty simple to make really. That was in PLA and there's another one. It's just a standard adapter. They work well, they're really quite strong. Um, what else have we got? Oh, Christmas. As I film this, it's Christmas time and I've done a few Christmassy things. That's a little tree. It's got an interesting effect. It, it kind of um, prints in an area where filament with no support, so you end up with loops. That's a small one. You can do much bigger ones, but uh, uses quite a lot of filament and uses up quite a lot of time, so I've only printed a small one. Oops, that's another type of tree. These you put a, a tea light in and it lights up quite effectively, it's quite thin. I adapted mine so that it's got a slot there and there. So you can put um, an LED light on a string in there and you can have like a chain of three or four of them and that looks quite nice, a little forest. Um, this is from um, Makerspace. They uh, 
do a system where you have can you have credits and they'll do some special things for you and this is one of them i think it's called statues or sculpture or something and it works by taking a photo of the front of a face then doing some fancy com computation to to actually do a 3d head from it that's from a photo of me some 20 years or uh, to some 20 years ago i don't really look like that anymore and my hair's never that good but uh quite good I thought maybe it could be uh, you could put your face on the front of an egg cup or something, but maybe I'll do that. <laughs> Don't know. This is a hollow vein effect. A tea light holder. Uh, my tea light's almost flat, but the idea is you stick your tea light in there and it shines through. But obviously, only effective at night. I need some more batteries in my tea light. Um, this I designed for the leg of my tripod. The tripod's about 20 years old now, but it is a good one. But the uh, feet were made of rubber and uh, have just rotted over time and fallen off. So I made that. It's got a strange texture effect on what is the top layer. I think that's to do with the amount of support I had to have because it was printed like that. Mm, it's okay. It works well. Um, the, these, this is a, a vent for a, an outdoor cabinet that I built. It's my barbecue cabinet. Uh, that's printed in ASA um, just to allow a bit of ventilation. And that's 51 millimeters, but it could be any size really. In fact, this one is 100 mil. He's for um, the outlet on my workshop air conditioner. That's again in ASA. Pretty quite nicely. That's the PEI plate that's giving it that texture effect. Um, uh, you end up printing quite a bit of stuff for the printer itself. These are desiccant holders. I haven't yet to install them. This replaces the, the desiccant holders that go into the base of your AMS unit. Um, and also I printed the three that go in the front of your AMS. I don't know if you can really see those. You have three holders and the middle one has a dehumidifier. And doing that's okay, but um, this is one of the dehumidifiers that I've used. Um, the, the, on the back of the dehumidifier, that's your inlet for the humidity. Now when it's in one of those containers, it's covered up. So it's actually in like its own little pocket and it gives a false reading. I can get as low as 10% on this gauge in the front uh, desiccant holder. But if you put a second one of these in the main chamber of the AMS, uh, you, I can get 20 or 24%. So there's a discrepancy there. So I don't really trust the one in the, in the desiccant holder. Uh, this is for holding vice grips. Uh, the vice grip dangles down. The, the, the adjusting knob hangs into there and and uh, comes down, but I've created that one and then made my own, which has three, which I prefer because I seem to have quite a few pairs of ice grips. I always buy them when I see them. <laughs> uh, this is uh, for a stop for my CO2 laser on the bed. So I have three of these which are adjustable um, and that allows me to position my, my material accurately. Uh, this is a prototype um, and the thread is too tight so I had to loosen that up. Um, this is also for the CO2 laser. This is quite fancy. It's got um, the ability to tighten the thread up and hold the arm. Well, that actually, in fact, for is for is for it goes around the CO2 head. Uh, CO2 head. It goes around the laser head um, and clamps on. And then this is for the LED pointer LED so you can adjust it so the height's correct and when you reach the right point you'll, you'll have the centre of where your laser's going to hit. This is a prototype and the final one I had a bend. I put a, a, a bend in this rod so that I could get a better angle. These are bag clips. This is on Maker World and many other places I think. Uh, these are quite good. You printed quite a few of these They haven't and they haven't broken so far. I've had a fair amount of use. Oh, should say this has this has the the hinge so this is a you don't have to assemble this hinge it's it, it's print in place i think they call it you just gradually gently break it free when you printed it and then it's a, a good hinge 
Um, this is the tool for releasing the um, AMS tube, which you can't really do. It's sort of set in and difficult to get out. So that will release the tube from the, uh, I forgot the name of the tube, the silicon tube from the AMS. So you can remove the AMS unit. Um, this was a cabinet stay latch that I made. This is a prototype and it's too short. I ended up making the arm longer, but uh, just to so the cabinet latched. I experimented with some labels, cable ties. All this is is um, done in 3D and then the top two layers I've done in green. Um, a whistle. <laughs> it's just a whistle. These, I don't know if I've mentioned these before, these are socket holders. It's just a little system, so they're all looking these and they're actually four uh, three-eighths sockets. And I've made a network of them. Um, that, that's a knob that I made for my uh, powder coat machine. The knob had, rad, had broken, in fact. So I made a, a replacement knob. This was a prototype. I think I did this three or four times just to get that hole exactly the right size. Worked out in the end. A funnel. That, that doesn't have to have any support when you're printing it, which is quite impressive. It's come up quite, quite a durable little funnel. I've used that a few times. It's a Bamboo Labs part case. I built that so I could put all my parts in there. Um, the replacement print head and uh, that's the pokey tube for your, for your nozzle. And some grease, but there's a few other things I haven't put them in. But this is this is um, dead flat. You print it prints the prints the white first, then prints the black, then a second layer of the black, then carries on and does the whole thing in white. Quite effective. I've got a bit of a, a run here. This is sometimes the you can get like a filament gets away and gets printed into the body. It's not too bad, but it spoils it a little bit. Um, I experimented with some press tooling. I thought, well, if I print at 90% or even 100%, I could make a, a male and a female, put some metal in between it, press it down with my 20 ton press, and then I get a perfect dimple. Good if you need a dimple. I mean, I can't think why I need a dimple, but it works. <laughs> I suppose you could put folds into metal for strengthening or something like that, possibly. This is for my vernier calipers into the Gridfinity system. Um, I printed a Gridfinity system, but I can't think where I put it at the moment, else I would have shown you, but uh, at the moment I can't seem to find it. But, uh, yeah, that's for your vernier calipers, so they stand in the drawer upright. These are diopter lens holders for my Insta360 Ace Pro. Um, there are so many prototypes, I must have done 10 different prototypes to get this right. Um, and made it one individually individual mount for each of my four uh, four diopter lenses. But that's worked quite well. It fits snugly over the over the case of my I've got a rubber case on my Insta360 Ace Pro, and uh, that fits securely, so you can do good close-up shots. And then last, it's a magpie. <laughs> This gets printed in quite a few parts, actually. It breaks apart. Get the thing without breaking it. Comes apart here. And then you put weight in there so you can get the balance right so he'll stand on his feet. It needs a lot of finishing and obviously for painting and gluing the tail on. I've attempted to glue the tail on once and failed because it's just difficult to keep it in place, but I'll have another go. I'm sure I'll get it right in the end. And then his, his feet are printed separately too. This, this is the effect you get from support. It, it required a lot of support along the bottom. And sometimes it doesn't come off properly. That'll come off though if I, I hit it with a blade. It'll, uh, it'll break away. Um, as regards the running of the printer, um, I had a block nozzle on the uh, extruder. And that was because of using the, the old filament. And I had a particularly old piece of filament, which must be seven years old. And the uh, first time I put that in the machine, which is very, when I first started using the machine, it shattered basically, and I had to take the whole thing apart, the AMS, the, the, the machine, then the extruder and the, um, 
the actual the nozzle and it had got stuck in the nozzle so I had to push that out that was a a nuisance to say the least. Things I'd change, um, if possible I'd like a better way of clearing the any blockages from the AMS but since I stopped using that old filament it actually hasn't been a problem. Also it'd be nice if the door could open up the other way just where it is it would be nice to be able to swap it onto the other side rather than that way but otherwise good. So overall after six weeks I'm still very happy with the Bamboo Labs printer. I'm happy with my purchase. I could have gone with the carbon but I don't really think it's necessary. From what I understand the only real advantage the carbon has is that it has a way of knowing when, you, um, when you've got a problem when you've had a collision or you've broken the, the part away from the, from the build plate it'll stop it rather than wasting a load of filament but that doesn't happen that often. So I've had a few issues but nothing that I can't really work around. So if you're considering buying a, a 3D printer I would consider the P1S um, it's not the largest of the build plates that are around, um, 256, 256, 256 I think it is, um, but that's that's good for most most projects. So there we have it, that's that's rounded up my six weeks with my uh, Bamboo Labs P1S 3D printer. Um, and I'd buy another one if I was going to run a print farm I would definitely would buy another one of these printers. I don't know about the A1, in my climate I think the A1 would be difficult given the level of humidity. I think your filament would be so wet all of the time, at least with this it's enclosed I and mean, I'm using uh, 20 litre pails with uh, desiccant in them to uh, store my filament that I'm not using at present and I'm happy with it, hopefully it'll last me another seven years like my original 3D printer did. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, it helps me, it helps my motivation in making these videos, it's actually been six weeks since my last one but I just thought I'd do an update on this. Thank you very much for your time.